Last week I started a two-part series. We did, we're doing a series in about four weeks uh, talking about rescue. I told you it takes two things for it to, for the rescue to happen. First, there's got to be a crisis, and then there's got to be a cry. So it's good, and it's okay if you got a crisis going on, all right? Because that means God's going to swoop down and rescue. What you got to do is cry out unto the Lord, all right? And so I've been trying to teach you. I, I, I uh, taught the last week on marriage and uh, give you some biblical principles, I, I believe. And I tell you, I've been very encouraged with the feedback that we've got of, uh, wives have talked to my wife about how spending time together and, and uh, hopefully you've been able to do that. Sometimes our lives get so busy that we have a difficult time doing that. Uh, but we have learned that we do what we want to do, right? We do what we want to do. What's most important to us, we usually find time to do that. And so it's important that you rescue your family. So you can't be a soul winner. You can't be a missionary. You can't go out here into the workplace and say, I want to live for Jesus and I want to, I want to win everybody to Christ around me. Yes, I want to be that Christian and you're not even doing it at home. All right? We get it so out of whack. You got to start at home with your family. And so we talked about the marriage. And listen, if you're here and yours is a mess, that's all right. I told you. God works best in a mess. Okay? Just let him work. Now, the second part of that is, is the privilege of being a parent. Now, I want to say before I preach that if you're here this morning and you're not a parent, uh, God didn't give you the privilege of having children just yet, I want to tell you that uh, it, you may not biologically have children, but you have children. See, for all these kids, when they show up here, they look to you. All the kids that are around you, whether nieces or nephews or whether they're people that you know, some of your friends, whatever it might be, they all look to you for guidance and leadership. And so it's important that we assume that responsibility as, as parents. And I, I want to to preach this morning and give you three or four things about what I believe the Bible teaches us about being a parent. Now, I, I want to say, first of all, let me preface it by saying this. I am not a perfect parent. My seven-year-old will let you know that very quickly, okay? I mess up all the time. I get it wrong all the time. Seems like when I'm at my worst, she's watching. I, I don't know about how your parenting uh, journey has been this far. been on mine seven years, uh, and uh, they've not been easy, all right? And they've not been perfect uh, by far. So don't think that I am preaching down to you. Matter of fact, I shouldn't even have to say that anymore if, unless it's your first Sunday. Uh, when I preach, I preach what God is dealing with me. All right? So they're all personal, and that's why they come from my heart. All right? Now, if you have your Bible or your smartphone or any other app, I want you to open that to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. He's going to put them on the screen, our one screen this morning. Chad, you're doing a great job, bro. The Bible says it this way. Children... Now, isn't it funny? We're talking about parenting, but the very first thing Paul writes to church at Ephesus is he says children. So he's like, you know, it's, it's something for us children to pay attention right off the bat, okay? So I want you to listen, all right? Some moms and dads are nudging their kids. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Verse 2 says, honor your father and mother. Paul was quoting from Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, which is the first commandment with a promise. Did you know it's the only commandment that there's a promise attached to it? Did you know that? Now, God promises a lot of things, but this is in the, in the commandments. He gives us this one about honoring our mother and our father. It's a, attached with a promise. I'm going to preach that in a minute. Verse 3, so that it may go well, this is the promise, with you, and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Verse 4, fathers, do not exacerbate or provoke, if you have an older version of King James or New King James, your children. Instead, bring them up in the training uh, the word there, if you have a different translation, is discipline and instruction of the Lord. May God be honored in the hearing and reading of His word this morning. Let's talk about being parents. Y'all ready? Yeah? Amen? Y'all ready? Okay, put your gospel seatbelt on, baby. Here we go, okay? All right? Yeah, it's a thick spirit in here. I feel it. I really do. I feel that spirit. But I'm fixing to turn loose, okay? All right? And some of you going, okay, let me cover my ears now. Yeah, I get kind of cranky. All right? So, listen. This morning, we're getting ready, and uh, my daughter, uh, Addison, she's, she's the well-behaved girl. It's always doing everything right around here. That's, that's my daughter. Uh, no. See, we're getting ready this morning, and, and uh, imagine this. She, uh, she loves to play school teacher. All right? I don't know where she gets that from, uh, Sandra, but she loves to play school teacher. And so this morning, she's ready, and we're all getting ready. Sandra is still getting ready. And I uh, love my wife. <laughs> And uh, she, she says, Dad, uh, uh, my class, and I'm telling you, I mean, she's having a full-blown lesson. I mean, she's just teaching up a storm, all right, to the imaginary class. Y'all with me? And so Addie said, Daddy, we're, we're, my class, we're going on a field trip today. And I'm like, all right, yeah, where are we going? She said, we're going to church. But my class is going to learn about God. 
Man, you talk about something, man. I like that. I don't know about you, but I like that. Yeah. Very encouraging to me that she would lead that way. Now, she is a preacher's kid. And so you would expect her, and that's why I've been so maybe rough on her about her salvation and baptism to make sure that she understands because she knows the lingo, trust me. She knows the lingo. And, uh, and so it's important. But I, I'm, I'm really proud that she sees that and that on Sunday morning that we're going to the house of the Lord, even though it's a warehouse, amen, that we're going to worship a risen God. That's our responsibility. Paul is writing this section and he talks about uh, submission. He talks about employers and slaves and he talks about husbands and wives and and, and then he moves to children because the whole unit of a family and how that's supposed to look. And I, I want to give you some principles that I believe he brings out and highlights. And I'm going to alliterate those for sake of an outline that you can keep in memory or write it down on the back of your little information card or, or the sheet that they give you for the service. The first one is this. What do our kids really need from us? It's not more toys. It's not more clothes. It's, yes, those things are great. It, it, it's not more food in the pantry, okay? All right? It's, it, it's not all those things. It's not what you would think the world would say. What do our kids really need? The first one is this. I believe our kids need for us to be real. I think they need for us to be real. Y'all all right? I, I'm telling you, I think our kids need for us to be real. The, the problem is is that we want to hide things from them. Now, at a seven-year-old, seven there's things that I do not tell my daughter. There are things that I do not expose her to because she's too immature to understand those. Y'all Y'all with me, okay? But the thing is this, she knows that I'm imperfect because in her seven years, especially that she's been cognitive of my mistakes or aware of those mistakes, the thing that I've learned the hard way is that I have to be willing to say I'm sorry. You all right? Some of you still struggle with saying I'm sorry. But one of the things that I've had to do with my daughter is for her to understand and see the imperfect imperfections in my life. The thing is, we paint this beautiful picture and life's not always beautiful like that, right? right. It's difficult. And then we shelter them. I mean, I'm getting right in it. You, you're okay. We shelter them from this world that we live in. The world is full of sin and things of the world. And, and, not, and not that they're all bad, but we shelter from them. Those things that they're going to be exposed to. We wonder why they go hog wild once they get out under our care. The reality is, life is tough. And we do make mistakes. But when we make those mistakes, we need to own up to it. Right off the bat, Paul writes to parents and he says this. He says, listen, if you're going to bring them up, you've got to bring them up in the Lord. And so what he's saying to them is this. Is that if you're going to raise your children right, then I told Sandra yesterday, I said, I, uh, yesterday evening, I said, I'm probably going to make some upset, okay? And, and that's okay. I like to stir your grits without butter. It's okay, all right? That's just how I roll. That's how I roll, okay? They need you to be Christians. The most authentic, the most uh, genuine people this side are Christians. Now, I'm not talking about the big hair channel with their teased hair and their bleached teeth. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about those at the grassroots that love Jesus, that are sold out, that want nothing more but to see Him uh, uh, glorified. They want to see Him publicized. They don't care about their name or their agenda. It's about Jesus and Jesus alone. And what your children need from you is for you to be real. The imperfections and all. Guess what? They see Him anyway, right? I told you up front. Listen, at, at my worst, my little girl has always been standing there. When my anger's got the best of me, when the situation has frustrated me, when things are overwhelming, and things can get overwhelming, right? It's amazing how those little eyes are watching me. And so be real. They need you to be real. And to be real means that you need to be a Christian. All right? The other thing about being real that they need for you to be serious and genuine is that they need you to be consistent. They need you to be consistent. Not consistently bad, but consistent in being real. And consistent with being in the Lord. There's ups, there's downs. What, what our kids need is to see us being real, that we're Christians, that we're, we're born again, and that we live for Jesus so that they can follow in our footsteps, all right? Now, and some of you may be here and you go, well, man, mine's far from the Lord. That's okay. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, it says that we are to train our child, to teach them, to nurture them in the way they ought to go in the Lord, and that they not soon depart. Yes, listen, it was 23 before I got saved. My mom and my grandma, they made sure that I went to a little Baptist church. They made sure that I went to Bible school. They made sure that I went to Sunday school. But now as soon as I got licensed, was able to drive. See ya. <laughs> but my bad. Couldn't do it. But now I'm a preacher. My mother, before she passed away, and, and uh, I still struggle with, with not having my mom because I'm a mama's boy. And, and uh, I, we was talking last night, not to chase a rabbit too long, was in the store and we knew two ladies here, and the cash, the, the lady running the register was talking, and, and I, I, I talked about the last card. My mother was handicapped, and she couldn't get out, but she 
love the Lord, and she would write letters and cards and mail those things out. And, and uh, one, one of the last ones that she sent me, I got, and I turned it into a sermon of what my mother taught me. And uh, she taught, so, taught me some key principles. Now, yes, yes, I got away from the Lord and lived well, <laughs> wild as a buck. I'm not proud of that. But, man, one day I saw Christ for who he really is and what he can really do for me. And I said yes to him. And my mother, she was disabled. She couldn't get out and about a lot. And, and before she wanted to be Lord, I, I was telling Sandra this, it, 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 she was very proud of me. And I, I was proud that she was proud of me. Now, and I want you to hear me. I want to be real, okay? My mother, uh, in 1975, that's when I was born. In 1975, she was a senior at Seneca. And she was uh, graduating. And she graduated, but she was not allowed to walk. And so I'm first born in our family, and my mother was, uh, she was always so proud that, that uh, she couldn't wait to see me walk across the stage and get my diploma. Well, I really messed that one up by quitting school. And so for a, a time period there, I, I really just, just went buck wild and lived just as crazy and sideways as one human being possibly can. And then God saved me, and God brought me back, and said, he's old, and, 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 and I got a GED, and I went off to college, and and got a degree, and, and the night I was able to, to graduate my first degree from recruitment, Matt, I, I'm proud of you about the finish day in the 400s uh, at the Bible College. And uh, when I got my degree, I walked across that stage and made my way to my mom and said, hey, you can have this. Yeah. I couldn't give her that diploma because I messed that up. And, and I say all that not to brag on me, I brag on the Lord, but I want you to be encouraged that if your children are wayward, you keep praying for them. Keep being yeah. real. Keep loving on them. Keep being consistent in the way you walk. Show them the right way. Lead by example. My mother was not perfect, nor my dad. But they showed me the right way. They have walked it out in front of me, even with all their mess-ups and imperfections. What our children need most is not new clothes and new toys and not name brand stuff and the latest gadgets. There's nothing wrong with those. I want my little girl to be dressed nice. I know what it was like to be made fun of as a kid that wore skips or cougars from pick and pay. Y'all, anybody know cougars? Holy smokes. I love me some cougars. I'm a cougar kid. Y'all remember when pick and pay was up? I ain't the 37, so don't look cross at it. Some of y'all know well what I'm talking about. TGNY generation. I mean, I, I, yeah. I want my kids. I want my little girl to have nice things. But what I understand is that it is more than that. I understand that she needs to see a real mom and dad that love one another. Yes, they disagree from time to time. But know how to patch it up and move on. And through the rough times, I tell you what, when I look back at 37, y'all listening to me? When I look back now on my mom and dad's life, my dad's still alive, remade those up uh, uh, on Joe Cassie Road. He loves the Lord and, and does the best he can. And still texts me. I can't, it's weird, my dad texting me. You know what I'm saying? He texts me, tell me he loves me about every morning. When I look back, the things that I gained, it's not all the fun that we had and the mountain trips and the car shows that we'd go to. My dad was not a beach dude. He was a muscle car, Mopar man from way back. It was always in the hot rods and Harleys. And we'd go to car shows, and I still love that junk, okay? It was stuff, junk, whatever you call it. And, and but, but, man, I look back, I don't learn from all those fun things. What I glean now is a man of God is all those difficult times and how mom and dad would pull together and how they would make it through and how we never knew, how we never knew as boys as growing up in that home, how poor we really were and how it was just beans and it was all that we had, but it would always be real and it be honest with us. And that's what I want my little girl to see. It's just not about all that stuff. It's about mom and dad being real. You say, well, listen, Dad checked out a long time ago. Well, bless God, honey. I'm glad you're mom and dad all together, and I'm proud of you. And vice versa. I understand the world we live in. I've been touched by it. I know it hurts, and there's brokenness. But what they need to see is for you to be real, to be a Christian, and to be consistent. Secondly, not only what they need to see is for us to be real, but they need, you and I need to know our role. We need to know our roles. I mean, we get, I, I've watched over the years, we get this so out of whack. We get it so out of whack. For some reason, we've moved into a generation. You guys okay, right? Amen? Amen. I, 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 I'll get to shout here in a minute, but I want to teach you, okay? It's okay to just teach a little bit. It's okay, right? Well, well, what happens is we've moved into a generation where now the parents are not the parents anymore. Well, who's running the show? The kids are running the show now, right? Amen? Amen. Some of you are going, you have no idea, preacher. <laughs> My God. Yeah, we, we move, we, we flip flop somehow. We, we've allowed society to dictate. We, we've allowed rules and regulations and the lack of discipline in their life. The Bible talks about instructing them. The Bible talks about nurturing them and caring for them. We've got our roles all reversed. We let the kid be the parent. 
And, and, I, and I can't tell you down through the years, and I'm not picking on anybody. I, you do what you do, but I'm telling you, you ought to do it in the Lord and let Him guide. But I've watched through the years, moms try to be best friends. You're not their best friend. You're their mother. You're their mom. You're to mother them. Dad, you're not their buddy. You can't go drinking with them and hanging out with them. You are to be the daddy to them and for them. You understand? And that doesn't change. I don't care if you're 44 and he's 64. It's still the same principle. You get the roles flip. My dad is, is a buddy. I like to go fishing with him, hunting and things like that. So don't take it out of context. Y'all know exactly what I'm preaching about. You get the roles reverse and we allow the kids to be the parents and the parents somehow they become the kids. Amen? Amen. Uh, and I know it's not an easy one. So let's look at the parents. What, what is our role? First of all, let's give it very quickly. It's to rear them, to rear them, to bring them up and care for them. The, the Bible talks about bringing them up. It, it, it talks about how our responsibility is to raise them. Can I say just a moment? I love you. And remember, every Sunday I tell you, you have to love me. The Bible says so, okay? <laughs> Some of my people remind me of that. I have to love you. Listen, SpongeBob can't raise your kid. Amen. You understand me? Some of you are like, I love SpongeBob. Okay. <laughs> His square pants can't raise your kids. Okay? All right? Listen, Victorious and iCarly and all the other shows, they can't raise your kid. They can't be the babysitter. You can't just turn it on and sit them down front. You've got to spend some time with them. You've got you to gotta parent them. You've got to raise them. You've got to bring them up. You gotta nurture them and care for them. That's your responsibility, parent. That's your responsibility. And, and listen, if you're an adult enough to make that child, you ought to be adult enough to raise that child. Amen? Amen. Amen. You all right? Amen. You should and do the best of your ability. Now I'm gonna to get to the children because I want you. I, you are to raise them. You're to rear them. And some of, for some of you, they're your stepchildren. God bless you. My brother, my brother has three children. His oldest is his stepson. But that boy has never, ever called my brother anything but daddy. You know why? Because he's been a daddy to him his whole life. You understand that? I understand. I understand the divorce rate. I understand the situations. I understand those. I understand those. And I'm not immune from them. But if it's been placed in your care, then your responsibility, your role is to raise them, is to rear them. And if you are big enough to create them, then you are big enough to raise them. And you don't have to have all the answers. That goes back to the first point. They need you to be real. They need to understand that, hey, you don't have all the answers. No one does. But who? Jesus. They need to understand that. Your job is to raise them. Listen, under this, in, in this role that we are, the parents are to rear them, are to raise them. He talks about how we're to nurture them. That means we're to provide for them. Listen, I'm telling you, and my daddy was, he was, uh, he worked in the slasher room at the old J.P. Stevens down in Clemson. You know, it's, uh, it's, the building's not even there anymore. And I said, praise the Lord. I used to love the, the, the Christmas time get-togethers at J.P. Stevens, man. We get this big old stocking. Some of y'all might not be aware of that. And my daddy was part of a fishing club, and, and we eat so many beans growing up. I can hardly look at a bean now. I mean, I do, but I'm just being honest. And, and uh, I told my daddy the other night, I said, we ate so many of those uh, dropped potatoes, you know, they come in a box. I don't know how you get a tater in a box, but anyway, and mom would lay, layer them in, in this. Oh, my Lord. I, I love you if you have the pastor over. I'll eat it if you put it on the table, but just know up front, oh, I can't hardly eat those, okay? All right, that's okay. <laughs> no, no. I had no idea. I had no idea of how bad it was and how much I struggled and how... Mom and dad would go through rough patches and dad would leave and then he would come back and it'd be weeks and he'd come back and they would call these difficult times. Why? Because during that time they were nurturing us boys. They were loving on us. They were doing the best they could with what they had. My mom worked at Sangamo, what they used to call it. Itron, I believe, is what it is now. It's even still operating. But mother worked there and, and, and uh, they worked two shifts, so a lot of times we stayed with my grandmother, my nanny. She'll grace us for the presence one of these Sundays. You'll never forget my nanny Ruth. Uh, oh my, you can't even get a word in edgewise with her. You think I talk fast. Oh, my Lord. Uh, it's the O'Kelly and her. But uh, uh, it's, uh, so they, they all rallied and they cared for us. Your kids need you to care for them, nurture them. 
I want to spend a little bit of time with the second thing, though. The flip side of that coin, to balance it out, y'all listening? The Bible calls it discipline. Discipline. Instructing in the NIV, discipline. 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 Right, parents? Discipline. Discipline. You know, the Old Testament says, you know I'm going to bring it up, right? You spare the rod, you what? You spoil the child, you save them, you lead them to salvation because you disciplined them. And the kids, and you're going, preacher, we loved you, but we just turned you off. But stay with me, I promise. Okay, stay with me, young adults. You are to discipline them. And I want you to understand that I'm gonna I'm gonna preach from my heart and from my home, okay? And I told Addie yesterday, and though she's seven, she don't really understand this. I said, baby, I love you. Your daddy loves you. I will use you as an illustration. Just know as you grow up, I love you, okay? All right? I just wanted to know that. So anybody that says that, I love my dog, I'm gonna use her as an illustration. Because in my family, they give me great illustrations. Now I said that uh, Addie's that good kid running around here. Now I flip that. She's that wild PK, that preacher's kid. She's wild open all the time. She's like me. She's high strung, and, and, and it's like we have to tranquilize her and get her to go to sleep. We don't tranquilize her, okay? We <laughs> podcast and record now. We don't tranquilize her. No Benadryl, no Michael, none of that stuff. So, you know. But literally, she has to pass out. She's wild up all the time. She's into something all the time, and, and she's so literal, and she's, and she's got this, uh, what I call this sassy pass. This, you know? Some of your parents, you know what I'm talking about? And this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that comes from. I, I don't know, Santa. I mean, I don't know where, but, but yeah, I mean, I don't know where this attitude comes from. And, and this is what we do. This is discipline, okay? This is how we, this, this is how we do it in our house. Yes, we practice timeout, okay? Yes, I've taken the classes, and we want to we explain to them. We want to sit them in timeout. We want to do all this good stuff. Yes, we sit them in timeout. But I put her in timeout last week, or maybe earlier this week. I put her in timeout. I think it was last week. Put her in timeout, sit her in the chair, get her back from the table, away from everything. She's sitting in timeout, but she's still acting up. Still carrying on, pitching a fit and showing out. So I walked up and I said, stand up. Now, I was a little more red-faced. <laughs> stand up. Stand up. She stood up. I said, now sit back down. So in the midst of timeout, I spanked her and put her in timeout. You know what? When she sit back down, You see, you think that's abuse because the world has taught you that that's abuse. You see, what I see it as, what the Bible teaches me, is that I'm teaching her to run this race this way, discipline. Now, this is what I've learned. When I first started in the ministry, you listening to me? When I first started in the ministry, I was a children's minister and a youth pastor. And I would run that bus over uh, this side of town and pick up all these kids. Mom and dad could care less if I got their kids. Most of them didn't even know that the church had even picked them up. And we would bring them to church and they were wild and they would show out and they were rebellious. They would throw stuff from the back of the van to the front. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I'd stand on the brakes and say, you better sit down, baby. You better sit down. <laughs> well, when I tell out, I knew I couldn't, but man, I'm telling you, they were crazy kids. Some of them are grown now. They're not here. <laughs> man, they were crazy wild, man. They were wild. Y'all you know, just like some of you were. They were wild. And, but here's what I learned. I, I tried to nurture them and I loved on them and I, and, I, and I babied them because I knew they come from neglect and, and difficult situations. And, oh, my God, it was so bad. But what I began to learn and God began to teach me way before I become a parent myself physically is that, is that man, the, the, the harder I was on them, the more discipline, the more boundaries I put there, man, the better they had, the straighter they stood, the taller they were, the more they respected me. I thought it would be opposite. I thought, well, the harder I am on them, the more rules I set, man, they're, they're not going to want to come back to church. No, they responded to it. They, they, they appreciated it. It was like the guardrails. It kept them safe. They knew their boundaries. Now, they get between them guardrails from time to time. Your kids will respond to discipline. The problem is life is about balance, and sometimes we wait too long and go too hard. We wait too long and we go too hard. It's about balance. It's never too late. But see where your kids are. Ask God to speak to you. Nurture them. Provide for them. Care for them. They don't need all this stuff of the world. They need your time. They need your love. They need your attention. Not the TVs. Not the nannies. Not the teachers. It's not the school teacher's job to raise your kid. It's not the children's ministry's job here to raise your children. It's your job to raise your children. And your role is to care for them and love them. But it's also to discipline them. Spank their tail every now and then. Yes, I said that correctly. I don't care if it's political, like it or not. Kids, I love you. I love you. We've got the roles reversed. They run the show. Now listen, my, I, 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 I have a difficult time with this one, all right? Especially with a little girl. 
oh my Lord, that's so tough. She can bat those eyes and, and it's, <laughs> she's so funny too, man. She'll be like, she's getting her way and she'll be like, Daddy, you're the best daddy. <laughs> it gets me every time. I'm just being honest with you. She just knows how to work me at seven. I'm just being honest. Sandra sometimes will get, get on to me about just catering to her. Like, and she's got no room to talk. I do her the same way. It's both of them are spoils thinking right. They are. Amen. But I do discipline my daughter. Yes, we practice time out. Sometimes I have to spank. I don't like it. I do it because the Bible teaches it. And I want to be an honoring dad. Let me give you this. Your role is to rear them, to discipline them, but it's not to provoke them. Y'all right, parents? And I, I promise you, parents, I'm going to talk to the kids here just, just in a second. We're going to close our service out, okay? Parents, you're listening. Step parents, parents, guardians, grandparents, whatever, whatever role you got in life, and I want you to listen to me. The Bible talks about that we are to nurture them, to care for them, to provide for them, to love them, give them our time, our attention. We, we, our role is to raise them, is to be the leader, is to show them Christ, to be consistent, to not be perfect, to admit our failures and mistakes, to teach them, to explain to them, why did I put you in time out? Why did I have to spank you? This is why I'm doing this, so that they don't just think that you're abusing them. Because the Bible goes on, Paul writes in the church and says, watch this, don't take it too far and provoke them or rile them up to anger. Now, I want to talk just a moment to you guys. I have met kids that are adults now that still believe what their mom or their dad beat them down with their whole life. That they'd never be any better than their sorry daddy or their slack mama. That you'd never achieve or, you'd never, or you're just dumb. You're just not good enough. You don't look good enough. You're not tall enough. You're not smart enough. You're not athletic enough. You're not this, you're not that, and beat them down over and over. And you know, if you tell somebody something long enough, hey, husband, get this too for your wife. If you tell them something long enough, they'll begin to believe that and live by that. If you tell them long enough that they're no good and sorry and will never amount to anything, guess what they're going to do? They're normally going to be sorry and amount to nothing because you've taught them that and inbred that in them and imprinted is what the, the technical word is in their life. And that's what that word provoke means. That's what that word means to raise your children, but not to provoke them to anger. That word anger is not like you and I blow up into this rage. Are you listening? I want you to get this, parent. That's not what kind of anger is talking about. In the Greek New Testament, that word for anger there means for you to live a life of resentment. Do you know anybody that resents their mom and daddy? That blame everything that they do on their mama or their daddy or the lack of? Sure you do. You may be here this morning and you're like that. Well, the first step in that is to repent from that, own your mistakes for your own, move on with your life, become a new creature in Christ, so that all things that are old have passed away. But if you're here and you're still raising your child, you speak words of life to them, you encourage them, you don't provoke them, you show them that your imperfections they are there and you're aware of them, but you love them and in Christ, you're going to speak life to them and you're going to challenge them and discipline them, but you're going to love them. Y'all listening to me? The power of life and death is in the tongue. Bitter water and sweet water can't flow from the same mouth. The Bible teaches that. Speak life. Some of you are speaking marriage, uh, speaking death to your marriage. Your kids are listening to that and they're picking up on that. Speak life to it. Speak life to the situation. Speak life to the world around you. Yes, I know it's bad and I know it doesn't matter if they're Democrat or Republican or Independent. None of them are going to solve the problem. It's going to be Jesus Himself when He steps out on the eastern sky and He calls us home. Teach your children that. Teach them words of life. Encourage them. And listen, it's never too late. I don't care if your kids are going to speak life to them. Don't always remind them when they show up of all the wrong that they've done. Hey, we're aware of all the wrong we've done, Mom, Dad. We're aware of it. We need love. We need nurture. We need understanding. Don't provoke them to wrath. Don't provoke them to resent you. Love them. And you'll say, well, I've already messed that up. It's never too late. That's the cool thing about God. Isn't it? Isn't it? You can go to bed, the sorriest low down something, and you can wake up and His grace and His mercy is fresh and new, and as long as you by faith will accept that, He'll resurrect you and resurrect your family and change your children. But it's got to start in you. It does. It does. It does. And it doesn't take the one to shift the whole generation. Amen? Sean, I've said that to you over and over and over, most of you. I come from a line of high school dropouts. 
First one in my family to ever get any kind of college education at all. To even sniff around and even be close to even thinking about going. My daughter better be a doctorate holder. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want my children to do better than me. Amen? Amen. Our role is to raise them, to rear them, to bring them up in the Lord, not to provoke them. And children, your role is this. You listening, young adults? The funny thing is, the funny thing is this, watch this. <laughs> when you study this, you never grow out of it. You know that? That what's good for the 8-year-old is good for the 18-year-old, and what's good for the 18-year-old is good for the 28, 38, 48. As long as your mom and daddy are alive, <laughs> here's your role. You listening? Here's your role. Your role is this. Children, you are to respect them. You are to respect them. You are to respect them. Uh, here's the thing. It, it, Parents, if you lead your life in a way that's honoring unto God, that you live this way, that's consistent and Christ-centered, they will respect you. You don't provoke them to wrath or to anger. Now listen, pay attention right here. Then you will earn their respect. But kids, as long as they're doing their best and living the best of their ability, imperfections and all, showing you the right way, making you go to church. Some of you said, making me go to church. Yeah, some of you, making you go to church. Making you do your homework, making you get things right, making you mind, discipline you. As long as they're doing that, they're doing it out of love, not provoking, not overbearing, not too much, not too far. Even when we're adults, then you respect them. You honor them. The Bible says that you are to honor your mother and your father. Now listen, when my dad remarried after my mother passed away, and I hope they listen to my podcast and video, I love my stepmom. But for two years, you listening? I'm, 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 I want to be real with you. For two years, I did not speak to her. Two years. Miserable two years. I didn't approve of it. I didn't like it. I, 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 I can go on and on all the time. Just, I, it was just bad. And I began to understand that it was on me. It wasn't on them. Because you know what? You're responsible for you. No one else. And so when I preach this text and, and I look this Old Testament verse up and I bring it over to the New Testament where Paul's writing and I say this thing about honor, listen, I, I promise you I'll study this thing out. Because I didn't want to. I didn't think I had to. She's not my biological mother, so I don't have to honor her or respect her. Wrong. Yes, I do. And so do you. You have to respect them. You have to honor them. And, and, and here's the thing. You, you, you got you to gotta listen to what they say. When they say to do it, you got to do it. And you do it with love. Even though you may grumble, listen, when you respect them, when you honor them, it means that you love them, you respect them, and you care for them as long as they need. Listen, I have made a lot of visits to the nursing home, okay? Because I want you to understand you never grow out of this responsibility. I have made a lot of visits to the nursing home. And I can't tell you how many older and elder folks that I've seen there that, listen, nobody ever comes to see them. Never. No one ever encourages them. No one ever honors them anymore. No one ever shows them respect anymore. They're just old. They're in the way. Let's set them to the side. You all right? I want you to understand if your mom or your dad is still alive, I want you to pray for them today. If you have a, a strained relationship from them, I want you to ask God to forgive you of that and to make some reconciliations if you have the opportunity. If not, God knows what it was, God knows what it is, and God can change your life. That's what it's about, you. All right? But if you have opportunity, because let me, let me be honest with you again. I was in a good place with my mother when she passed away. I was in a good place when she passed away. Great relationship. Never left her side. She lived uh, in the CVIC unit at Greenville Memorial for about a month on a machine over there. Never left. Never left. I look like Forrest Gump been running that race. I just beard pack. Well, mine was kind of an Apache style, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't got grown up enough yet to have a full beard. All right? I never left her side. But I'd give anything at any time for about two minutes just to talk to my mom. Prior to that, prior to my mother passing, there would be stretches of months that I wouldn't call and check in. Moved to Florida for a while. Boy, I thought I was <laughs> And so to deal with my mother's death to start with, it was like that. It was like, Mom, I, I'm just not home right now. And now, even to this day, I can't even go back to our original home. They're gone. Sold the land. It's, it's, it, it, there's no homestead there anymore. And, and so I say all that not to bring a downer on you. I say that to encourage you 
that as a child, you'd never grow out of the responsibility of honoring your mother and your father. I don't care how sorry they were. Somebody say, you have no idea. Listen, it may not, are you listening to me? Please get this. It may not be your biological mom or dad, but it is he or him that raised you and influenced you. That's who you honor. That's who you respect. That's who you live your life for Christ for so that, that they are glorified and you bring honor to their life. You understand? We talked to a gentleman last week and he began to talk about this preacher in his life and how this preacher encouraged him through the years. Man, he'd get teary-eyed just talking about this preacher in his life. That was his father figure in his life. So I want you to understand, you never grow out of this. You show them respect, you obey them, you honor them, and the reason you do that is because the Bible says with the promise here is that you live a long life. You live a long life. That long life doesn't necessarily mean a numerical length of time. You all right? Say amen. I want to be sure you're still with me, okay? It means a life that's full of peace. You know, those two years that I didn't speak to my dad because I was, I was poochy and puffy over what he had done and the decisions he had made, they were miserable times for me. My life was falling apart. Didn't, wasn't even aware of most of the junk that was around me that was just crumbling. And, and, and I'd lived such an image for so long and, and was such, such a guy that was so, so fake and phony, yet all I kept saying was how real I was and how, how true it was and how all this. But, but then those two years were the worst two years of my life. And when the Bible talks about how we honor our mother and our father, how we show them respect, how our life will be long. So it's a life of peace. Man, it's good to see my phone, even though it's a little weird that my old man texts me that even knows how to text, so to say. All right? Man, it brings me great joy to read I Love You, Son. And it brings me great, great, great joy to say I love you too, Dad. There's something about that. That's what he's talking about. Parents, the reason we accept our responsibility of raising them, is there's a reward for us. The reward for the children is that they may live a long life, a life of peace and joy. Parents, the, what we do is we stand back and we get to watch them. Watch this. We get, we get to watch our kids learn the purpose of God, the promises of God, and the peace of God. We, we get to watch our kids learn how to serve the Lord, to trust the Lord, and to be controlled by the Lord. That's the reward that I get. That was cool this morning. My little girl said, hey, that I'm playing teacher. But my class is going on a field trip today. I figured she'd say to Disney or something. You know what I'm saying? Being she's seven and crazy like that. She said, no, we're going to church today. We're going to learn about God. Man, that, I'm telling you, that, that messed me up. I get to stand back and know my little girl's not perfect. Yes, she's got to be putting time out. Yes, she's got to be spanking time to time. Yes, she's struggling with her math abilities. Yes, all these things. Yes, 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 yes. But it is awesome to watch her learn and know more about God every single day and it brings me reward. If you go back in the Old Testament, I'm ending with this. If you go back in the Old Testament and you read the book of Joshua, every time you read this, and I taught this in a small group, every time you read Joshua, it says, Joshua, son of Nun. Every time, over and over it does that. And every time for eternity, that's read, Mr. Nun, in you in. I'm not hung with that name. Mr. Nunn, every time it is read, Joshua, son of Nunn, old Nunn goes, that was my boy. That was my boy. Why? Because every time it is read, every time it is spoken, it is in service to the Lord, it is honoring unto Him, and children, you are to honor and obey your mom and dad. You are to show them respect and love. You are to be obedient when they say do it. You are to do it. Mom and dad, you are to explain why they're doing it. You are to discipline those children. You are to speak life to those children. Even if you're stepchildren or they're your biological children or they're your neighbor's kids, you ought to speak life to them so that you can stand back and watch them excel in God and the glory of God. And for that to begin, you've got to be a Christian. You have to be a Christian. You have to be born again. And I don't listen. We're going to give invitation right here. I don't mean this fake, phony stuff. I don't mean this church facade. I don't care if we've got two here as long as those two say, I love Jesus. You understand me? I'm not talking about religious group. I'm not talking about denomination. I'm not talking about you sowing in a minute some money into the ministry. Listen, that's between you and God. I'm talking about somebody that has understood the very nature of the fact that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. That you by faith have reached out to a God whom you have never seen physically, but by faith in your heart you feel Him tugging at you and know that you need to change. There's some things you need to get rid of, and you can't do it. Good, because God will do it through you. There's some things that need to be restored. God, through you, will do that. You have to give it to Him. If you 
want your kids to grow up. I don't care. Listen, if you are grown and your kids are grown and got families of their own, it is never too late. Do you understand me? Don't give up on them. Don't you give up on them. Don't you quit. Don't you throw the towel in. Don't you give up on yourself. Give in to God. Press in. And let God do it.